This is going to be your guide to EV training in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. If you enjoyed the video or if it helps out in any way, don't forget to leave a like and share it with your friends so EV training is post game. This is the last step of building a competitive Pokemon, which means you need to do a lot of stuff beforehand and we are going to be getting into some complicated late game stuff. I already did a video on the battle tower, so if you want to know a good way of getting battle points before you have like a real competitive team, get some battle points, get some power items. Power items are going to increase the EV yield of your Pokemon, but we are getting ahead of ourselves because Pokemon Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, this might be the first Pokemon game someone has played, or maybe the first game they are considering getting competitive in, so we need to talk about what EVs are. So if you hear someone talk about Eevee, they are not talking about that Q Pokemon that evolves into like 10 different things. They are talking about effort values. And effort value is achieved whenever you defeat a wild Pokemon in battle. So depending on how many effort values a Pokemon has, its stats are going to increase. Every 4 EVs is effectively one stat point at level 100, and then like 8 to 4 gives a stat point at level 50 because 50 is half of 100. So as you can see right here, 4 will go from 83 to 84, but then it takes another 8, takes another 8, takes another 8, and so on. And then you get 32 stats at level 50, and then 63 stats at level 100, or 63 stat points at level 100. And this is how you make your Pokemon as strong as it can possibly be. That mixed with Natures, I already did a video on Synchronize, which is how you get Natures. But overall, it's about making the Pokemon reach its maximum stat potential. You don't have to go just like 252, 252, and then technically 4 because you have 508 EVs to distribute across the Pokemon, with 252 being the cap in a stat, you can just kind of do all kinds of weird things for very specific move sets and damage calculations and strategies and stuff like that. So that is what we're going to be talking about with the EVs, and that is what we're going to be breaking down. And it also goes back to, like, defeating a wild Pokemon, because every time you de defeat a wild Pokemon, you get some kind of effort value. Now you can see a Pokemon's EV yield by going to their page on Bulbapedia. Gastrodon is worth 2 hit points. Not all Pokemon are worth 2, some are worth 1. If you have a fully evolved max stage Pokemon, it can be worth 3, but you don't really find those in the wild, so they're not worth EV training. And also, Pokemon in the Battle Tower do not reward EVs, it's only trainer battles and wild Pokemon. So what you're looking for are Pokemon that reward high amounts of EVs that are really easy to find in the wild, and then you can train up your stats really quickly that way. So this happens during your story playthrough as well, that's not really competitive because on, on a guard chomp, you're going to go and find like a Roselia, and then that's going to give you some special attack EVs, and like you're randomly getting attack and defense and hit points, and then your Pokemon becomes a mess. But it is something that is like always in play. That's something to be aware of. It also means that when EV training, make sure you are only KOing the Pokemon that you are targeting the EVs of, or else you're getting garbage EVs and you are losing stats and becoming uncompetitive. And even though you're kind of getting the lightning course on how EVs work in Pokemon, we're still not ready to talk about those power items because you can check a Pokemon's EVs by looking at their stat screen. So you can do is take any Pokemon, go to their uh, summary, and then go to this right here. And if you press the X button, uh, weird things just happened. So this shows where the EVs are invested in your Pokemon. This Pachirisu has special attack attack and speed once again just by like playing through the storyline you're going to get or, like just playing the game naturally you're going to get some weird stuff and when it's blue like that that means it has achieved all 510 evs that it can have so i said 508 earlier but technically technically a pokemon can have 510 but those two don't divide into four so they're not worth any stats whatsoever it's kind of a weird system but that's what we have right there and when a pokemon is maxed out in a stat it's actually going to glow a or it's not going to glow but it's going to sparkle so you go over here we see this gyarados gyarados has a max attack and max speed because it was properly ev trained and now it's all like glowy and sparkly and stuff so the orange color means that a Pokemon does not have maxed out EVs, so it is still eligible for receiving EVs, and then the yellow are just the Pokemon's base stats. So you can also remove EVs by using the berries, and you can kind of get an idea of which berries they are by checking at the battle tower. Or you can also just look it up because the berries are well known. So Pomeg, actually you can just see the effect. A berry to be consumed by a Pokemon, using it on a Pokemon makes it more friendly, but lowers hit point base points. Or attack base points or anything like that. So anything that lowers base points means that's lowering EVs and it's going to reduce it by 10. 
So technically it's going to take 25 to 26 of a berry to fully reset that Pokemon's EVs. But let's say you do, like you accidentally got some effort value somewhere because you KO'd a few Pokemon or you put the wrong power item on. Well, you can actually undo that by using the correct berry and you don't have to spend battle points to buy the berries. They're found all throughout the Sinnoh region. You plant them, you get more, and then you, like pretty much you always want to be planting Lepa berries and EV reducing berries. Maybe just have a couple of citrus berries as well because that's a good competitive item and then you won't be harvesting them at all times that way if there is some kind of ev oopsie you're pretty much able to immediately rectify it and that brings us to the power item so whenever a pokemon is holding a power item as its held item it is going to gain eight more evs in that stat so attack defense special attack special defense speed and hit points depending on which which one it's holding and then that's also going to add with the wild pokemon that you are KOing. You can also double dip with these items. Let's say I give my Pokemon a power weight and then I KO a wild Pokemon that gives attack EVs. I gain however many attack EVs that Pokemon rewarded, but also just eight hit point EVs no matter what happens. So that could be a good way of like going for very precise numbers like, oh, I want 80 in hit points. So I'm going to KO 10 Pokemon that don't give hit points, but I will be holding the power weight, and then I can use that to kind of get ready for the attack or the other stats I'm looking to gain on that Pokemon. Now, you can be, like, super meticulous and efficient about it, but you don't necessarily need to be, and then that's also where we get into vitamins. So, a uh, long time Pokemon fans might just be like, yeah, I use vitamins and it caps out at 10 and I have no idea what they do. Well, as a Pokemon Sword and Shield in Generation 8, you can actually use as many as you need to cap out the stat. So in theory, it's like you buy 26 of a protein using on Pokemon. That Pokemon is instantly EV trained in the attack stat, maxed out, no other work required, but it's expensive. I do not recommend spending battle points under any circumstance for a vitamin, because these are referred to as vitamins, unless like it's only one vitamin you need and you have more battle points than you're ever going to do anything with. You can also buy vitamins in the Veilstone department store for 9,800 Poké Dollars. I also do not recommend that except under certain circumstances. So pretty much the plan is you grind battle points in the battle tower for an ungodly amount of time and then you buy multiple of each item because you want to be doing bulk EV training to make it as fast, efficient, and time-saving as possible. Now, ideally, you have five power bracers, five power belts, five power lens, and so on, but that adds up and gets stupid expensive real quick. Now, if you can afford it, cool, and there's also going to be times where maybe you don't even do that, like you're not training to max out the defense of five Pokemon at the same time, but having a couple where it's like, okay, maxing out four or three, again, it's all going to be about speeding it up and time efficiency, and also means that you need to find a competitive IV Pokemon, breeding guide soon, if you watch my Badoo video, very complicated. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond Shine Pearl has not done competitive players many favors. But we're getting there on the IVs, guys. EV training, that's more ubiquitous and... I can do it now, is kind of the idea. So not only do you need the items, but to justify the items, you need to have five of the Pokemon already competitively bred, or IV trained, or bottle cap hyper trained, or whatever, which takes many hours to do. And then that's when you finish that off with the uh, power items and then the training that way. So bulking is always going to be good, but sometimes you don't get into that situation. Um, let's now talk about how you find Pokemon for gaining EVs. Because that's the point. Like, let's just say, theoretically, we have a lead Pokemon that can just KO everything, like an Alakazam. So that's going to, like, Alakazam's already maxed out, whatever. And then we have five Pokemon in one train. We give them the power items that we're looking for. And then we go out and find the wild Pokemon, and then we just train even more. Or if you want to be extra efficient, you don't have the Alakazam, you have like a pickup Pokemon or something. That way, as you're KOing these Pokemon for EVs, you get a chance that one of your Pokemon is going to find a valuable item. And then all the other Pokemon that you're training will go right here. And then it comes down to optimizing the Pokemon that you are looking to encounter, and naturally the Poke Radar is going to be a good way of doing that because it starts a chain of Pokemon. So Roselia gives two special attack EVs, which means if I'm doing special attack EV training, KO this or catch it to help keep the chain going. Catching a Pokemon still rewards EVs, so I do whatever with this Roselia, and then we get the stats, and then we start another chain on the Roselia, and then we keep on going. So where do we find the Pokemon that we're looking for? Like, how do we get all of these EVs, and how do we get all these Pokemon? 
Well, you just go to the route that has the highest chance of spawning a Pokemon that is good for EVs. So if you want to get speed EVs, we have Floatzel. 35% chance to spawn on Route 218, and it's also a really good place to get hit point EVs. So as we talked about earlier with the Gastrodon and two hit point EVs, it's a 20% chance. So again, just use the Poke Radar, chain it, and then get all of those EVs. And this is also where the underground is useful, and some areas and EVs are better than others. Like if you go to a water cave, just a water biome, and then you have like a lot of ground type statues, the odds of finding a Gastrodon are going to be really high. So you just like find multiple Gastrodon spawns at a time, just keep running in, KOing the Gastrodon, and then you're going to be getting a lot of hit point EVs that way. So if you like stumble through a cave and you're like, like the, the spawn tables and spawn rates aren't like as well known as the routes, but if you're kind of like in a cave area and you're like, hey, there's a lot of this type of Pokemon spawning, and it is an evolved Pokemon. It does reward good EVs. Just put as many statues of the type of that Pokemon in your base as possible, try to get the highest spawn chance, and then it probably turns out to be better than just the route encounter method, even with the Poke Radar, because Poke Radar can fail. It's not like super likely, but it's a higher chance to fail than in Diamond and Pearl. And also just like getting to that chance can be a little annoying. So now we can also talk about other areas. Route 212. So Route 212 has the Roselia, but it's not the best place for special attack. If you go to Route 212, you want to go at night because there is a 55% chance you find a Pokemon that rewards two attack EVs in the B-Barrel or Cricket Toon. If you don't want to do any like time shenanigans, still 45% chance. So it's like, it's a good chance you get a B-Barrel or a Cricket Toon. So that's going to be for the attack. Now, defense is annoying. Defense is the weird one that gets kind of tough because... Sturdy actually does something. So if you're used to EV training back in Diamond and Pearl, well, Sturdy only prevented one-hit KO moves, like Sheer Cold and Fissure and stuff. Now Sturdy is just a free Focus Sash. So if you run into a Graveler with Sturdy, it's going to take an extra hit to KO. Like, you still do it. You still get the EVs. Kind of annoying. I recommend going to the second floor of the Victory Road because Onyx and Steelix can spawn. If you're just going for the EVs, just do it. Like, okay, Onyx is worth one EV, but KOing it, getting the bonus from the power item, that's still worth it. It's 9 EVs versus 10 EVs. There's really no problem there. Uh, when it comes to defense, I've also thought about going for Magcargo, because Magcargo seems like it's a decent spawn. It's not super common, but you can also find Onyx and Geodude and Graveler in the caves with a lava biome. So a lot of defense to be found here, and Magcargo can be pretty common, worth two defense EVs. But you want to be careful about the Slugma, because Slugma rewards one special attack EV, but then when it evolves into Macargo, you can tell with the shell that it gets defensive, you know? It's like, well, those things where it's based off of the stats, and sometimes there isn't, like, a lot of straightforward logic to it. So, before you, like, start mass killing Pokemon, double check if it is the correct EV, if it's not already mentioned in this guide. So yeah, like, Graveler, Onyx, Steelix, that works out pretty well. If you want to go for a special attack, the Valor Lakefront has Girafferig. So yeah, Girafferig actually has a use in Pokemon, mostly just for KOing relentlessly and getting special attack EVs, but that is a Pokemon you can do it with. And then Tentacruel is going to reward special defense EVs. You can find Tentacruel on Route 223. No Poke Radar on the water, but a 60% spawn chance, so it's pretty common. Pelipper rewards defense, and Manti Mantike gives one special defense as well. So Mantike, also fair game, avoid the Pelipper and you should be good to go. Unless you're also like doing a just defense, special defense tank Pokemon, there's a few of those out there like Drifblim. So Drifblim, any Pokemon you KO is going to give you some kind of value on Route 223. That's another thing, like just paying attention to the Pokemon you're looking for and the stats and the EVs and what spawns and you can just do some good EV training. Now that's pretty much it for base EV training, but there's still some other very important notes to talk about. So these two trainers right here are the best trainers for making money on. So use the Verse Seeker, you battle them, you get 26,000 if you have an amulet coin, then you can use that to buy vitamins, but I don't recommend this. Like, it's going to be faster to get the power items and then bulk EV train on wild Pokemon, but the interesting thing is, these trainers, they have a Gyarados and a Raichu. So Gyarados rewards attack EVs and Raichu awards speed EVs, which means if you are bulk training for speed and attack, then you can actually just grind off these guys. So with these trainers, you can quickly gain attack and speed EVs while also getting a lot of money, which you can then use on vitamins to kind of supplement your EV training. Like I said, I do not recommend value or vitamins for just raw EV training because grinding on these trainers to get money is going to be slower than the bulk EV training. 
except when it's for attack and speed, and fortunately attack and speed is fairly common. So like I said, there's going to be optimizations and stuff that make your EV training go a little bit smoother, and this is one of them. There's also like other trainers that have high EV rewards, but for the most part, like, it's also pretty simple to not mess around with the verse recorder and run around stuff and just like farm wild Pokemon for EVs. And then the last thing to talk about is Pokerus. So Pokerus is weird because it's incredibly, incredibly rare. It makes shiny hunting look like a coin flip. So getting it in the early days of a new Pokemon game like Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, it's kind of sketchy. However, it can be transmitted. So in theory, once one person gets Pokerus, then everyone has access to the Pokerus, but you need to like trade and receive a Pokerus Pokemon. And the Pokemon adjacent to the Pokemon in your party after a battle have a chance of spreading it as well. There is a timer on Pokerus, so its infectious period can expire. All you have to do is like use the Pokerus Pokemon, spread to other Pokemon, throw the Pokemon in the box, it preserves the Pokerus, and then you can kind of keep chaining it that way. Now, the effect of Pokerus is that it doubles all effort values gained in a battle. So it doesn't make vitamins twice as efficient, but it means that those 10 EVs we were talking about. So you KO a B-Barrel, you get plus 2, but you have a power item, so you get plus 10. Well, that actually doubles to 20. So you get 20 EVs per battle with an infected Pokemon holding a power item going up against an evolved Pokemon, which is pretty nice. Now you do that across, you know, five other Pokemon on your party, now we're talking about 100 cumulative EV gain per wild Pokemon battle, that makes training go real smooth. All you have to do is faint 13 wild Pokemon, and then that Pokemon stat is maxed out. So with Pokerus, it really comes down to finding someone that's willing to give you a Pokemon with active Pokerus going on, and that isn't really difficult because, let's say, if I had it, I could just get hundreds of them and then trade them away or something. But again, like I said, in this early stage, the legitimacy of it's kind of weird, but at some point just becomes like impossible to distinguish hacked poker rust from non-hacked poker rust. So really the biggest thing I have to say is be weary that if someone's giving away like a legendary Pokemon with a master ball or a rare candy or a bottle cap and it has poker rust, that is clearly 100% hacked. Also all breeding dittos, any five or six IV ditto giveaway, 100% hacked. And then like I said, even just like a weird kind of sus Pokemon where it's like, yeah, this guy just gave me a Master Ball and a Pokemon Poker Rust. Nah, it's, that's cheating, bro. That's, that's hacking. So unfortunately, the toxicity and cheating is just rampant in the Pokemon community. But if you're watching a guide like this, you're probably trying to do something legitimate. So massive respect and kudos to you for that. And that means you're probably trying to stay away from illegitimate things. I know it's tempting to take that hacked Master Ball off the Palkia and delete it, but then keep the Master Ball. That Master Ball is just as hacked, you know, you might as well open up PK Hex at that point and then make a full box of Palkia with Master Balls. Same thing for like anything that is spawned through disallowed glitches like cloning or just straight up hacking and save modding and stuff like that. So it is kind of weird, it is kind of crazy, but overall that is going to be your guide to EV training in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond Shine Pearl. But guys, enjoy the video, hope you all have a nice day, thank you very much for watching.